Our minds wander. It's part of being human. And as writers, our minds probably wander more than most people's. Have you noticed when you do your best thinking, when you get your best ideas, while riding in the car, sitting in a boring class or through a boring meeting, while taking a shower or just lying awake in the middle of the night? Where are the special places where you think best? What are the times of day when you are best able to think deeply? Hi friends, it's your writing coach, John Claude Bemis, here to help you with generating amazing ideas for stories. Today we're gonna to be looking at daydreaming and how as writers, we can do it more productively. Let's learn how to daydream like a pro. What do you do when you get bored? For many of us, the first thing we reach for is our iPhones. Boredom, instantly gone, problem solved. But is it a problem that needs to be solved? I love my iPhone. It's got so many amazing functions. It really is a marvel of the modern age. But here's the problem. As creative people, what are the consequences for not letting ourselves get bored? Boredom is a gift. People say necessity is the mother of invention, but I'd say boredom is invention's other mother. When all you have is your imagination to entertain you, your imagination grows. It expands. And believe me when I say there are more wondrous and meaningful things in your imagination than on the internet. So let's clear a little space. Let's make time every single day to get away from screens and just let our imaginations reign supreme. Let's make time in our lives for dreaming. Maybe it's daydreaming, maybe it's letting your mind wander. That's all essential. But let's also look closer at how to make our daydreaming productive and supportive of our writing and other creative pursuits. So. What is productive daydreaming? This should be part of your daily creative process. A good habit to start, which is simply spending time thinking deeply for an extended period of time about your story. Usually, you want to pick something specific, like, what's my next scene I should write? Or, how will my character find that missing notebook that's so important to the story? Productive daydreaming or this deep thinking doesn't happen as well when you're sitting in front of the computer or with the blank page of a notebook in your lap. It actually works best when you're doing some activity, preferably a mindless activity like folding clothes, unloading the dishwasher, or just riding in the car. Basically anything that could be boring. It activates that part of your brain that wants to be entertained. But Instead of entertaining your brain with screen time, you're letting your imagination provide the fun. Did you watch my video on the ancient tradition of Salvatore Ambulando? That's the idea of solving a problem by taking a walk. But walking is a great time to do some productive daydreaming. Let's look at why this works. It comes down to neuroscience or how the brain works. You've got a left side of the brain and a right side of the brain. We generally think of the left side of the brain as being more logical. The right side is thought of as more intuitive. I realize there's controversy around these, but this is helpful to look at these generalities. When we have a problem to solve, whether it's the next scene in our book or trying to remember where we left our keys that we lost, our first step is usually left brain logic. But think about how often you lost something or you couldn't remember a name, and no matter how much you thought about it logically, the answer just wouldn't arrive. And then, just as you're brushing your teeth, taking a shower, you suddenly remember. I found that when I'm most frustrated trying to solve a story problem, that it's usually a sign I'm about to have a breakthrough, a big imaginative insight. Maybe not right away, but soon. It's like in strength training where many people lift weights until their muscles are too tired to continue. Push your imagination in that same way. Wrestle with those thoughts and questions until you get frustrated and your brain is sore. Then do something relaxing, clear your head. That's often when the right brain comes to the rescue. This is brain science in action. And it's super helpful for creativity to understand how all this neuroscience works. Do you know the story of Archimedes? 
So Archimedes was a Greek mathematician. The king at the time wanted to know whether his crown was pure gold, as the maker had claimed. So he asked Archimedes to figure it out. But Archimedes couldn't melt it down or damage the crown. He thought and thought, but he just couldn't figure out a way to do it. Frustrated, he took a bath. Once he relaxed into the tub, the solution came to him, which had to do with water displacement and volume, but that's not what's important here. He was so excited to share the discovery with the king, he ran naked through the streets to the palace crying, Eureka, which means I found it. The important lesson is that it was only when he f relaxed that he found the answer to what he was looking for. While this story may not be true, it illustrates an important aspect of how creativity works. When you get writer's block or start to feel frustrated, the best way to get an insight is to relax. For Archimedes, it was the bath. For you, maybe it's taking a shower or a bike ride or playing piano or lying in a hammock. Whatever helps you relax and clear your head. Relaxation encourages the right brain to pull together pieces of thoughts in ways that logical thinking doesn't. So I've got two tips for you around how to be more receptive to creative insights. First, a question. Guess which color is the best color to paint the walls of your creative space? You might think something bright like red or yellow, but research shows a common color like blue or gray is the best for stimulating creative thought. It's closest to the sky or ocean, which is naturally calming and thus creativity inducing. So first tip, paint your office blue. Second tip, if you need to work out ideas, solve problems, or get a big creative insight, don't drink caffeine. Caffeine is a stimulant. It activates that left brain logic, which can be helpful if you need to perk up to write a thousand words for your story. But if you just need a little time to think or daydream, it's best to be relaxed, even a little drowsy. Sometimes after lunch, I feel a little sluggish, but rather than getting a cup of coffee, I just embrace being a little tired and use it as a chance to just think and work out some ideas. That's the thing. Sometimes, funny enough, when you're a little tired, it enhances creative thinking. So here's what I want you to do. Make time in your daily schedule to daydream. I know you probably can't find time to write every day. Few of us can, but you can make time to think about your story, your characters, your scenes every day. Will it be when you're in the shower, taking a walk, while you do the laundry, or while you sit in the backyard for 15 minutes. Think deeply and daydream productively. That's essential for all writers, artists, and creatives. It's our most important creative work. I hope this video gives you new ideas for how to daydream like a pro. Thanks for joining me here today. I hope you'll share this video with other writers and creatives that you know, and leave me a comment in the messages, or find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm John Claude Bemis. Want to find out more about how I support writers through school visits, manuscript critiques, workshop presentations? Then check out my website, johnclaudebemis.com. Go dream what only you could dream, and go write the story that only you could possibly write. I'll see you next time.